Hello, and in this video we're going to take a tour around the deep structures of the cerebral hemispheres with a particular focus on the basal ganglia. Now traditionally these are regions which uh, can cause quite a few problems and that's understandable because their morphology is very complex. However, really, um, the, the, the key to the door, if you like, to understanding these structures is to look at their relationship to the ventricular system. So let me just introduce the um, view that we've got. Here I'm showing you um, slices. These are T2 MRI slices taken in the uh, transverse, coronal and sagittal planes. And this is part of, of, of a wonderful um, brain atlas, which I'll link to. Um, and, and this brain atlas not only gives us beautiful MRI images, but what it also does it, is it has 3D reconstructions of the relevant regions. And I've started off showing you a reconstruction of the entire ventricular system. So you can see the familiar uh, shape here. We've got the curved C-shaped lateral ventricles. We've got the flattened third ventricle in the centre with a hole in it. Remember, this is a cast of the ventricular system. This is the space that the fluid, the CSF, takes up. So really, this hole um, represents the interthalamic adhesion between the two halves of the thalamus. So we have the flattened third ventricle, and we can see it flattened in the midline there. Then we can see the cerebral aqueduct connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle, which is kind of um, pyramid or, or quadrilateral in shape. We can too see the two lateral recesses um, and, and the median aperture there as well, allowing the egress of cerebrospinal fluid. Now, when you're trying to understand basal ganglia, or indeed, for that matter, hippocampus, um, the shape of the lateral ventricles is key because there are components which reflect that shape of the lateral ventricle. And you can see that with its frontal, um, occipital and temporal horns, the lateral ventricle is a C-shaped structure. This is a C-shaped structure. Okay, and these structures, some of them reflect that shape. They either reflect the shape of the C or they reflect the shape of the space in between parts of the ventricular system. Let me show you a few more features that we're going to be using during this exploration. Um, on the images that we've got on the right hand side, I'm using a feature called the crosshair. Now essentially, the intersection of the crosshair in these images um, is pointing to precisely the same place within the 3D coordinates of the brain. Furthermore, the crosshair um, on the 3D view corresponds exactly to the location of the crosshair in the sections. And I can prove that to you. Um, currently, the crosshair is sat right in the middle of the third ventricle, in fact, at the interthalamic adhesion. So if I go onto the coronal view and move the crosshair up and down, you should see it changing position in the other views. So we can see here I'm moving up and down through the third ventricle. The sagittal view isn't really changing all that much, um, but the transverse view is, of course, because we're moving up and down through the brain. Likewise, if I go to the transverse or axial view here, and if I move left and right, the coronal view won't change all that much, but the sagittal view will. So we have got a lovely correspondence between these different regions um, of the brain and the, the location of the crosshair across the sections and in the 3D view. Right, so let's start adding some structures to this 3D model of the ventricular system and start to try to understand their relationships to one another. Now you'll see me glancing upwards occasionally and that's just because I've got a screen up here um, with a number of additional settings loaded so that I can add on the additional structures that we want to study. Let's start off by adding on the thalamus. Now, let me remind you about what the thalamus looks like um, in one of these MRI images. If I zoom in onto the coronal image, you notice that the crosshair is in the, th in the third ventricle, in the midline, and these dark regions sitting lateral to the third ventricle are the two thalami. There is a left thalamus and there is a right thalamus. 
looking at the transverse section once again we're slap bang in the middle in the third ventricle and these two bulky regions sitting either side of that third ventricle are the two thalami on the sagittal view we can see the medulla um, pons and midbrain and we can see that we're sitting above the midbrain so the thalamus is plonked on top of the midbrain it sits directly on top so let's add the thalamus first and the thalamus has two halves and we'll add the left thalamus first so I'll just go up to my second screen and I'm just going to add on the left thalamus so then in this cyan color we have the left thalamus and you can see it uh, meets the midline at the interthalamic adhesion. The thalamus is a large structure. It's big. It's big because it has many, many roles, primarily regarding communication between other parts of the nervous system and the cerebral hemispheres. Furthermore, what you can appreciate is that the thalamus is in fact arranged in a series of individual nuclei. Now, I'm not going to talk about the functions of these individual nuclei, but they do have very um, different roles depending upon the system that is involved. So, for example, there are thalami which receive input from the somatosensory system. There are thalamic nuclei that receive input from the cerebellum. So the thalamus is arranged in many, many nuclei, but for our purposes we can simply consider it as being this large, bulky nucleus, important if, as, as, a, as a relay station, if you want to talk to the cerebral cortex. So let's put on the right thalamus. And now you can see we've added the thalami, and we can see that the thalami, in fact, sit either side of the third ventricle, squashing it flat in the midline, and you can see that in our coronal image on the right hand side in the middle that the, the third ventricle there is indeed squashed flat in the midline by the thalami on the left and right hand sides furthermore the two, th the two halves of the thalamus sit beneath the lateral ventricles so if I zoom out on the coronal section the lateral ventricles and if I put the crosshair on the right in the right lateral ventricle here you can see I'm sitting above the thalamus okay so the thalamus sits um, in this space beneath the arms of this T shape created by the lateral and third ventricles right so that's the thalamus added on a key key uh, landmark so now let's add on some components of the basal ganglia and the first component I'm going to add on um, is the caudate nucleus so let me just go up to the top of my screen and let me find the um, caudate nucleus just just bear with me um, for a little while just because there's a lot of settings here um, and, and and we've just got a lot I've got a lot to look through so I've, I've added the left caudate coming up in this pinky color and now I'm going to add on so the um, right hold on sorry I didn't add on the caudate there I added on a different structure which I don't want to add on yet here's the caudate in this green color so there's the left caudate um, and now I'm going to add on the right caudate okay so we've got the cast of the ventricular system we've got the thalamus in this pale blue or greeny blue and in dark green we've got the caudate now look at the caudate here my crosshair is is in the caudate um, for example you can see if you look at the top right hand screen we can see how the caudate is sitting there closely related to the lateral ventricles and in the coronal view you can see the caudate just bulging into the cavity of the lateral ventricle there now the caudate nucleus is part of the striatum and you can see that its shape matches, corresponds to the shape of the lateral ventricle. In fact in this particular segmentation of this scan the resolution doesn't seem to have been quite high enough for the investigators to follow the caudate right down to its tail which in fact comes all the way around here following the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle. So the caudate is more extensive than this and its shape reflects the shape of the lateral ventricles. So there um, is the caudate nuclei. 
Now let's add some more components to the basal ganglia and let's add on that structure that I accidentally put on a little bit earlier um, which is the lentiform nucleus. And You should recall that the lentiform nucleus is composed of two subcomponents, the putamen and the globus pallidus. So we'll put on the uh, lentiform nuclei now. Here's the right lentiform nucleus and here is the left. So the superficial most portion of the lentiform nucleus in this pinky colour is the putamen. Okay? And in the coronal scan, and really if you can master the coronal um, view of the brain, um, you're really getting quite close to fully understanding the structure of the hemispheres. But looking at the coronal view, I'll just pop my crosshair here on the putamen. So I'm just on the superficial most portion of the putamen here. And remember that the putamen sits superficial to this region, this deep region of, sorry, the putamen sits deep to this deep region of cortex called the insula. So we haven't got the insula on this 3D view, but here is the insula, um, which is hidden away usually behind the uh, parietal and temporal operculum. Um, but here is the insula here, normally overlying the putamen where our crosshair is sitting. If I change the view so I can look more medially, so we'll look beneath this 3D view now, we can see that there are two further subcomponents of this triangular lentiform nucleus. In blue and orange, these represent two subcomponents of the globus pallidus, those being the external segment of the globus pallidus in blue and the internal segment of the globus pallidus in orange. So the best way to appreciate these is in fact to look at the transverse section. So I'm just going to zoom out on the transverse section and let me find a, a, a nice enough level for us to look. So we can see here my crosshair is in, in the red section top right. My crosshair is sitting on the superficial most portion of the putamen. If I zoom into this I can now move my crosshair to this point. Okay. And this point corresponds to the um, globus pallidus. Now let me just change the view ever so slightly so that I can just try to convince you that I'm on the globus pallidus there. So this here is the globus pallidus here where the crosshair is sitting. Okay, And that's the internal segment in orange. So we can see that we have putamen, globus pallidus external segment, globus pallidus internal segment. Now if we combine this lentiform nucleus with the thalamus as well as the chordate we can see where the internal capsule is running. So let's go down now and look look down here. All right. So here we're looking down. Here's the thalamus in pale blue and here's the, the uh, lentiform with the pink, blue and orange structures there. And can you see this space here, this black space between the two? That is the space that is occupied by the internal capsule. Now the internal capsule um, it, on, on these scans comes up as quite um, uh, low signal, quite dark. So let's try to just find the internal capsule on the coronal view. And the easiest way to find the internal capsule is you find the chordate here on a coronal, or it may be the thalamus at a different level. You find the lentiform nucleus there laterally, and the internal capsule appears as a diagonal band going inferomedially. So my crosshair is in the internal capsule, and I can put it plumb in the middle of the internal capsule, and if we go to the 3D view, there it is. Okay, There's the yellow crosshair sitting within the internal capsule, um, right between the chordate and the lentiform nucleus. Now, if you know a little bit more about the internal capsule, you appreciate that it has a couple of different regions. And if I move um, the crosshair back very, very slightly, I approach the region known as the genu of the internal capsule. So here we see the internal capsule as a V-shaped structure in the transverse section. V-shaped structure.
and the genu of the internal capsule is is the is the point the point of the v the medial most portion this is important because this is where facial upper motor neuron axons run generally so we've looked at the thalamus in relation to the ventricular system the chordate the lentiform nucleus uh, which com is composed of the putamen and the globus pallidus let's add one or two other structures just so that and um, we can um, say that we've looked at most of the basal ganglia um, organs the important final structure we need to add is the substantia nigra so let me go up to my other screen and I'm looking for the part of my list which contains midbrain structures and I'm going to add on the substantia nigra now okay on each side so I'm adding the left substantia nigra and I'm adding the right substantia nigra so let's zoom in let's try to find the substantia nigra on the sections and the easiest way to find the substantia nigra on a section is to look at a transverse or axial section and try and find that classic Mickey Mouse face which we've got here okay so here we've got the classic appearance of the midbrain I can zoom right in here and we know that the substantia nigra is these eyebrows of Mickey Mouse so in theory if I put my crosshair around about here I should be in the region of the um, the substantia nigra which indeed I am so here these are the substantia nigra um, I just want to remind you this is all based on real data this 3d reconstruction you're looking at is derived completely from these MRI scans so we're looking at what the real structures look like in a living person the substantia nigra you should remember contains many many dopaminergic neurons and these project up to the striatum so they in fact project up to the chordate in green and the putamen in pink there so you can see where in space the so-called nigro striatal pathways need to be running they need to be running in this kind of direction to send all that dopamine up to the striatum itself so that's all I wanted to talk about really with regard to the topography of the basal ganglia in relation to the uh, ventricular system and the internal capsule thank you for listening